Morning everyone, today is Monday, May the 3rd. My name is James, I go by Rascals Resellers here on YouTube and on eBay. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna pull the orders from over the weekend. It was actually only two. Uh, it was kind of a light weekend, but right before I started shooting this, we actually had another one. It was a shot glass. Maybe I shouldn't have dished glassware? I don't know. Let's get started. Alright, so two of the items are right over here behind us. We just kind of have them sitting out. It's a pair of shoes and a backpack. So one is going to be the Adidas backpack over here. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's got load springs. Picked this up at Goodwill. Had it for a little while. It's uh, it sold for $29. And then this pair of Heelys here had these for... Not too long, maybe about a month. I only had one wheel, but I did advertise it as such. Um, they've got lights, but I didn't have a way of testing the lights on them, so I did let put that in the description as well. So there's two of them, and then the last item is going to be this shot glass over here. Luckily enough, there's not a lot of glassware, so I pretty much know where it's at. It's this one here. I'll try not to drop it and break it or anything. It's this Texas Longhorn. Let me see if I can get this where you can see it better. This Texas Longhorn shot glass. I'll try putting it up against the wall here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Texas Longhorn shot glass. I actually had to relist this one this morning, and it sold for probably. It sold like I just finished relisting, and it sold like five minutes after I got it listed, and sold for twenty dollars, free shipping. Probably got like a dollar or two in it, so not bad for a shot glass. Uh, maybe I just need to be more selective with my glassware because this is not a bad little flip, I don't think. We'll, we'll go pull the numbers and see. We'll get all this stuff downstairs and start getting packing and go from there. The first thing we have are this pair of Heelys. Uh, one wheel on the bottom. I got lights on the side. Um, I've shown quite a few pairs of shoes, so I'm going to try to make this pretty cut and dry. It's a priority mail shoebox. You can get this free on the post office website. A uh, piece of packing paper in the bottom. The first shoe is just going to go in like so. Next shoe goes in like so. And then we will just take another piece of packing paper. Drop it in the top. Tape up the box, we're done with that one. That's the shoes. The next one I want to show is this backpack. So, this is a 1092 box. Again, free on the post office website as long as you're shipping priority mail. I'm going to take this. Went through, double checked all the zippers, everything is working for sure. Um, <clears throat> zipped them all closed. I'm just going to slide it in like so. so. That's like that. We got that hanging out. We're going to take a 1095 box and slip it over the top. It takes a little bit of finagling, but works quite nicely. Like I said, it takes a little bit of finagling. There it goes. It almost, I already tried it off camera, it almost fit perfectly in the 1095 box, but it stuck out just a little too much. So, there's that, it's in there. What we'll do is we will pull this strip here, and press it up against this box, Nice and tight. And then for the rest of the flaps, we'll go through and we'll wrap tape all the way around it real good and tight to make sure these boxes don't slide apart from each other. So that, that one was pretty simple too, actually. The last thing is the shot glass. I paid a dollar eighteen for this shot glass and sold it for nineteen ninety nine. 
I think I'm going to go to the trusty 4x6x8 box. I was going to use this box, but to be honest with you, I couldn't figure out exactly how it closed. I guess I could just probably just tape the heck out of it. What I'll probably do, because this should go first class. Let's see. Yeah, that weighs 7 ounces with the box. It weighs... Nine packing material shouldn't be that much. I think it'll still go first class, even in this box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to box it up in here. And if it ends up coming out over a pound, maybe I'll put it in here for less packing material. And maybe we can get it under the one pound mark. Let's, let's give it a shot. Let's try it out real quick and see what happens. Let me, let me get the box and the bubble wrap ready off camera, and then I'll bring you back in and we'll see what happens. Here's the shot glass, all wrapped in bubble wrap. I actually put bubble wrap on the inside of the shot glass, wrapped it once that way, and wrapped it once this way. I'm going to roll it in a piece of packing paper. Just trying to keep the ends safe. Again, probably an overkill, but I'd rather get there in one piece. Here's the 4x6x8 box. It's just got a little piece of packing paper in the bottom. I'm going to put this in there to where the packing paper is kind of... So the packing paper is kind of keeping it from going anywhere. And then I'm going to drop another piece on top. Biggest thing is I want to make sure it's in the center of the box, like sitting right in here, but in the center, and not moving around. So that way if it gets impacted on any of the sides, hopefully there's enough space in here with the paper and stuff to where that never actually makes contact with the glass that's sitting right here. Now the moment of truth. Pretty sure that, that's less than a pound. Let's see. Let me see if y'all can see that scale. If I zoom in, Man, you're never gonna actually be able to see it. So, all right. Eleven point three six ounces. All right, focus. Come on, camera, focus. All right, well, you get the point. It's under a pound, so we're going to get to do it first class. So that's pretty cool. So, shot glass in glassware. Might be something there, maybe, if you find the right ones, I guess. Because that is the second shot glass that I sold for $20. The other one was in the shape of a pistol, which is pretty cool. Hold on. Oh, we just sold another pair of shoes. So, I guess we'll include that in today's numbers also. All right. All right, so... This pair of Hoka's actually just sold while we were on camera just a minute ago. Uh, they sold for $35 to include shipping. Uh, they, were, they were fairly beat up here and they've got quite a bit of tread wear on them. Um, and I did make sure that I disclosed that completely in the auction. I guess for whatever reason, the person who had these, maybe I guess they were rubbing their feet together like this. I, I don't know. But then there's quite a bit of tread wear on the bottom. But it was fully disclosed in the auction. But they sold for $35 shipped. Alright, so went to the post office and dropped off the packages that you saw. But also stopped by Goodwill. And like I said, even though I'm kind of still on Goodwill restriction because I have a death pile that I'm still working on. I always kind of run through there. And I found this Breville juicer. And they wanted $20 for it. So I plugged it in and turned it on it worked but this piece here I can't tell if that's just rust or or what so I don't know if that piece is any good so while I was in the store I kind of looked up comps I mean this piece is filthy but I'm pretty sure that can be cleaned out and the top is dirty but I also looked up comps on everything even if this piece is not any good or it's bad and I can't use it I looked up the sold comps for the plunger. I found one where they sold the plunger for 15. They sold this pulp container for 20. 
they sold the blade part all by itself, which that's the question mark. Uh, they sold it for $25. Uh, this plastic bowl also sold for $20. And this lid also sold for $20. I went in and looked up some of the comps on the motor, and they were all over the place. One was like sold for $13.68 plus $50 shipping and stuff. So I'll need to do more research on that. But I think that just... If, even if I have to part it out, I think I can make my money back in a profit just off parting it out. Here it is. Moment of truth. I've got it all cleaned up now. This was very simplistic. No big deal. This was very simplistic. No big deal. This I just used a Clorox wipe on. Undid the cord. Wiped it down. That was easy. This I thought was going to be the hardest piece, but see how that shined up? And these three screws just came out, so I just took the three screws out, the blade comes out, I was able to hit it with just like a like a dish open toothbrush and got everything off, cleaned all this up. This actually was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <coughs> this all cleaned up. What I found after I got it cleaned is it has some scratches on it, but I don't really think that's a big deal. I don't think it's going to mess with the functionality of it. This was, this piece was probably the biggest problem because there's a lip underneath here that you kind of got to get around in there with the sponge and go all the way around. It was, it was not fun, but there it is. It's all clean. So now we put it back together and give it a test. get it moved somewhere where we can plug it in and we'll give it a test plugged in and now we're gonna do the moment of truth everything's locked in cleaned it's all spinning it's low over here but I was feeling how fast this air was coming out I'm kind of afraid it's going to shoot out because I think it's supposed to the picture is supposed to attach and it drops in so I'm probably gonna have to kind of hold this like this so I wonder if I can um, let's give it a shot and see what happens I'll put it on low and do some tomatoes That could have gone better. There's all the pulp seems to be coming out. I got juice over here. try it on high, see if I can get squirted with some cucumber or something. <laughs> cucumber. 
but I think there's still value to this and it's all working. So I'm gonna rinse it back off, get it cleaned up with soap and water again and see if we can't get it for sale, get it sold. All right, so we got everything packed and shipped and got it dropped off at the post office. We stopped off at Goodwill, we picked up the Breville juicer. Uh, it was pretty dirty. Um, I wasn't 100% sure on that one, but I figured I'd take a chance just simply because I know Breville's a good brand. We owned one back in the day and if I can, if, if I could get it cleaned up and it was all working good and everything, then there should be money in it. How much money? I'm not 100% sure. Um, as you saw, we, we were able to get it cleaned up. We tested it. Uh, I'm wearing the juice to prove that we tested it, so that was fun. Um, but it's, it works. It works good. It is mis missing that picture, that little spout on the side supposed to go into a picture and it just dumps it straight in there to keep it from shooting out. Um, so that does decrease some of the value. Uh, we discussed earlier that I can part the whole thing out for just the parts alone. I could probably get about a hundred bucks, not counting the base. That's probably about another, I think 50 or 60. Cause I went and looked up some comps. Uh, the, the thing to that is, is I feel like it's going to be a slow process. So what we decided to do is just put it up locally here as is, uh, it's in good working order uh, for $80. Uh, figuring that somebody would probably come in and say, you know, will you take 75, will you take 60, something like that. So it'd be a quick flip. So don't really know. Um, but I do know that I like the idea of not having to go through and try to ship that either A, individually or B, all together if I can flip it quick here locally. Um, if we can't, then of course I'll go ahead and go through and put it all up for sale. So we'll see how that works out. Hopefully in some future videos, we'll, we'll have an update on the juicer, but I was very pleased in the fact that we were able to get it cleaned up and it does actually work and work well. All right, so to wrap up, I'd like to go through the numbers. Um, this video was supposed to be in regards to the sales that happened Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, because as we've gotten a little bit bigger, we have consistently had sales on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I figure that's where most people are out of work and at home, you know, so they have time to actually shop. But uh, Friday and Saturday were slow. We actually didn't even have any sales until later Sunday evening. Um, we had two. And then while I was shooting the first part of the video, we actually had two more sales come in uh, within an hour of each other. Um, so I just went ahead and included them in this video since I was already packing and shipping anyway. Might as well go ahead and do those also. There's no sense in waiting. So with those four items from Sunday and Monday, uh, the gross was $124.95. The cost of goods was $20.10. That took us down to $104.85. Our eBay fees were $17.96. That took us down to $86.89. And then shipping, shipping was a little higher this time. We had to ship some things a little further out than what I feel was normal. And three of the items had to go priority. One only went first class. So shipping was $37.61. That took us down to $49.28 is what we're actually keeping and put our profit margin at 40%. Obviously that's lower than what we want to run, but I figure when you're probably selling three or four items at a time, you know, that's, that's going to vastly vary depending on what is actually selling on any given time. As we do this more and more, I figure we'll refine it to where we can figure out what our more profitable items are. We'll get through some of the stuff that we bought when we first started doing this. So hopefully as, as time goes by, everything will just kind of level out. I would like to thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you found any of the information to be benef beneficial or useful, please hit the subscribe button, uh, the like button, and ring the bell so that way you'll see any of the new videos. You'll be alerted when the new videos come out. Um, and, until next time, thank you. 
Have a great day.